place that I have not been. Mm -hmm. um, and luckily, I've I've been. My career has been good to me, and I've been to a lot of places. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, uh, my husband and I came back a month ago from um, Greece and from Istanbul. Really? And Istanbul. I mean, I knew that Greece would be a joy um, mm -hmm. again, but Istanbul, which was new to me, was just remarkable. So, do we have Istanbul? We books have and works? Istanbul in the future. I, in fact, we uh, we went to. Top Kapi Palace, and at the last minute, I it was closing for the day. And at the last minute, I realized that I needed a book about the palace because I knew I'd never I take I had taken notes, but I knew it wouldn't be enough. And I raced into the little shop in in the courtyard, and amazingly enough, in this city where everyone spoke English, no one in the bookshop spoke English. Oh no! So we did a lot of this and this and this. <laughs> And, and I, I got a book. <laughs> oh, good. That reminded me when you said people didn't speak English. One of the, the really nice things about writing for Harlequin Silhouette is that your books are sold in so many countries. How, do you know how many countries your books have been sold in? Um, my books have been sold in more than 20 countries. Uh -huh. and, uh, and it's amazing to me that we have such a market. I, I, when I travel, I invariably stop in at bookshops and Every once in a while, there's one of my books, and it's just a lovely feeling. And they're but translated to other languages? They're translated to other languages. We hope they're translated appropriately. <laughs> you know, I can, read, I can read some of the books. I mean, I can read some French and mm -hmm. some Italian and Spanish. But other than that, Korean, Japanese, I, Russian, I was talking no to a friend recently who said, oh, I just got a copy of my book in the mail, and it was in Arabic. Mm -hmm. said, yes. Oh, great. Yes, I have Arabic. There's a wonderful feeling knowing that, that women in so many different cultures are sharing this, this same experience. Uh -huh. uh, it's just a lovely feeling. I and of course, it's so. a very nice thing in, in terms of knowing your books are really out there. Uh -huh. Now, this was a little different, too, with this book that we have here, Hot City Nights, which is, um, there's three authors. Is this, this is an anthology. I was asked to, to do the lead story for it. Uh huh. Yeah, you've got the bigger print name. The bigger, we'll the bigger print your name. Name's bigger. Hot City Nights. Yes. And 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 um, your books are your your love scenes are pretty hot. Well, you know, when I started, um, I had no idea whether they should be or shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But I really had not read genre fiction, so called. So I sort of stumbled into what I felt it should be, which I think served me well because it allowed me to a certain freedom that I don't know that you have necessarily if you're trying to write a book that you think is going to sell. And the love scenes So many from, people do that, though. And it's, I know, but don't you think that's... I, 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 the first book I wrote was absolutely the book of my heart. And everyone said, no one will ever buy this book because it doesn't fit into any category. And, and I didn't sell it right away. I sold, an, I, I wrote another book because I thought, okay, this will be more marketable. And it sold really quickly. It mm -hmm. sold right away. It won a lot of contests. So it won, as an when I was an unpublished right. writer and could enter all those yeah. contests, it won a bunch of contests and it sold right away. And then I got the contract to do the, the paranormal series. But I still had that book and I still thought it was a really good book. So, but once I now had the chops and could say, oh, I published sure. all these different, sure. I, I oh, put makes it back everything out different. there and it did sell despite the fact that it kind of defies category. And I don't think that I could have, I, I've, I've written to a degree to the market, to a very small degree, but if I'm not, I, I can't write something I don't well, care about. Well, I think about. you have to consider the market when you're writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, all of us want to do this professionally because we also want to earn a living at it. Yes, and that's one of the, the things about the, the Harlequin Presents line is um, you've done real well with that. I mean, you, you're able to, to make a nice living with that. I am. I've been very fortunate. It's, a, it's the best-selling romance line in the world, uh -huh. and, and I've moved up so that I am, I'm considered one of their lead authors. Mm -hmm. and, oh, absolutely. Uh, and so it, it translates into a very comfortable income. Well, I'm, I'm, it, that's going to be very encouraging for a lot of our aspiring romance authors to hear out there. Because I remember when I was so excited, now I've decided to be an author. And I went to my very first convention, and I sat down at a table with a bunch of published authors, because you know I'm so shy. 
I'm, and I'm, I, I recognize names around the, the, t the table, and everyone's, they're complaining about how expensive the hotel is and how expensive the flight was to get there and how they had to save up their money to come to this conference and do this. And I'm thinking, but you're famous authors. Can't you afford this trip? You the, know? the truth is that in our profession, which obviously you're aware mm -hmm. of, there's a, a great diversity um, of, of income levels. Uh -huh. And, and I, I stayed with this because I loved it, but I also, I'm talking about now about when I first began, but I also stayed with it because I could see that I was going to earn a decent, a decent amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's an important thing. Well, you it is a feel job. That you feel that you are being rewarded for what you oh, do. Oh, yes. Now, and, and you do have to approach it as a business and as a job. What's your writing day like? Oh, it's a long day. I, I start... I don't start very early. I'm really not a morning person. So it takes me a few cups of coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, I start at 9 or 10, work straight through the day, except I break for lunch. Mm -hmm. my, uh, my husband has his office upstairs, and I'm downstairs. We have an intercom. So one of us will call the other and say, isn't it time you know, for lunch? Then I really work straight through until I'm at a point where I feel I can quit Generally, that's perhaps six in the evening. It's very hard for me to pull myself out of a story when it's moving well. And when it's not moving well, it's equally difficult because I keep feeling that if I just hang in, you know. Uh -huh. I tend to work, um, I'm a real type A personality, and I tend to work probably six days a week. Uh -huh. But between books, I just ease back, hang out, and, and try to enjoy you know, not working, Between although I'm books? happier when I work. Okay, you write three, three, three to four books a year, but you have between books time? Between books. That's an amazing thing. Well, the books... Well, then you do have to work a very, you know, six-day work week but it's, to give right, yourself and that. It's, exactly. And I mean, it, don't you feel that it's worth it to you, to, to if, if it's going well, to keep writing oh, and have a little extra there time? There is nothing as precious as those days when it's just flowing out like a water faucet Wonderful. and you look up at the clock and you realize you've been writing for nine hours and you haven't eaten and you're... <laughs> Wow, how did that happen? That's right. Those days are precious, and you don't mess with that. Oh, you're, no. no you when you're getting not, one of those you days, do you not. don't mess with it. Um, now, are you a plotter? Do you plot everything out in advance, or do you? I did for my first couple of books, probably the first six, and then I found myself finding that sort of dull. Mm -hmm. So I just sort of flew with the next. Um, I tend to be very, very cautious in terms of understanding my characters before mm -hmm. I begin work. I know more about my characters, this guy, this shake in this book, I know more about him than I could ever put into a book. I'm kind of in that middle stage where I no longer necessarily have to have a completed manuscript right. to sell a book, oh, but sure. I do have to submit um, a detailed synopsis to, to, to get a contract. Um, I'm sure at this point you say, I'm going to write three Sandra Martin books, and they say, okay, will you sign here? You know, they're that, <laughs> It, they trust it's, you. It's a very nice. Feeling. After seven yes. books, they trust you. Yes. Um, now I went to your website and I noticed that, that one of the at the bottom of the page there's this beautiful picture of a wolf, mm -hmm. and it says "click here." Did you? I yes, hope you I did. did. I clicked there and I went to the website. What they're called the Defenders of Wildlife. Right. The Defenders of Wildlife. Is this something you're real involved with? I I am very involved with animal causes and wilderness causes. I really always have been. I uh -huh. mean, as I said earlier, I'm a city girl, but I spent a lot of time in the country as a kid and always loved being outdoors. Not that I'm a, don't confuse that with a sports type. I mean, anyone that knows me well can tell you that's not me. But I love, I love hiking. I love being in a place.